Let's friggin' go. I'm friggin' back. King Cold's friggin' back in. You know, I apologize that I haven't been able to make any videos recently. You know, like, I had to make one when Darnold was traded, obviously. But, um, it's been a real pain in my ass to get it done while at college just because, um... Just the situation I was in didn't really uh, allow me to do it as much as I wanted to. So, you know, I, I tried to do some audio only, but, uh, you know, they ended up sucking. So, uh, it's, you know, it's, it's in the past. I'm back. And I apologize for the, um, for the bad lighting, the bad camera, and I need to get on that soon. But, you know, um, I mean, man, drafts, what, three days away from now. And uh, I've already made three mock drafts. And, you know, they kind of get repetitive after a while. So, you saw me kind of switch up things in my second one just to... You know, so it wasn't the same thing. This third one is, is is more like my second one, and this is really how I think it's gonna go. And um, I'm pretty I'm pretty confident in all my picks. You know, I know I'm not gonna get as much right as I as I expect to, but uh, you know, it is what it is. And um, you know, I'm gonna get into it. Uh, first pick, Jacksonville Jaguars. You know, everybody everybody and their grandma has known that Trevor is going first for like three years now. So you know, there's not much whole lot to uh, go into on this. They've, there's been questions about his work ethic. Like, it's just give me a break. Like, you know, the media is just so the media is so predictable. They always question the same things. Like, it's 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 just always like, yeah, he's not he's not committed to football. Like, like what? It's just stupid. Uh, second. My Jets, they're going to break my heart when they take Zach Wilson. I, I'm I'm really not a believer in Zach Wilson. You know, I'm going to have to come to accept it. And, you know, I'm even right now, I've kind of already come to terms with it. And I'm just more of like, you know what? I don't I don't really like Wilson as a as a prospect. But I think he'll be fine in the Jets system just because I really like um, Shanahan's offense. You know, what LaFleur is bringing to, to New York. So, um, and you, uh, I, I really like the Jets weapons and, you know, um, and everything like that so um, I'm definitely uh, excited to see what the Jets do um you know at following the Wilson pick but I'm just not excited for Wilson to be a be a jet but you know it looks like the writings on the wall third San Francisco ever since San Francisco traded up you know the third from wherever they were six if I if I remember right um, everybody knew is gonna be a quarterback they traded up from um from 13 or yeah 12 and uh, everybody knows a quarterback, and you know the speculation has gone all over the place. Like first, everybody was like, "Oh, it's obviously Fields," and then, then I feel like somebody on Twitter made a joke where they were like, "Could you imagine if the 49ers took Mac Jones? It'd be just ridiculous." And then like, and then you see everybody start mocking Mac Jones to the 49ers, and they just like went along with the joke. And you know, you're kind of seeing that fade, and and now. Now people are kind of saying it's Lance, and like I've said from the beginning, I've always thought it was going to be Lance, just because you give up that much, you know, to trade up. You want to get the highest potential, I think. Um, I don't know how Mac Jones would make sense, but I just don't think they trade up to three for Mac Jones. And I, you know, maybe they try to trade up a little. Like, I don't know. I just don't think it's Mac Jones. He has the highest floor out of everyone after Trevor and Wilson, from what I'm hearing. But um, I don't know. It's just something. Just something tells me Lance is going to be a 49er, and I just feel like I, I love Trey Lance and um. I, I think he could end up being better than Trevor Lawrence. I don't think any quarterback has the potential to end up being better than Trevor besides Lance. But, you know, with that being said, is he ready his first year? And uh, I don't think he will be. And I don't think he'll start week one for the 49ers. And I think it'll be between him and Jimmy G. And um, I think you'll see him beat out Jimmy G sooner rather than later. And, you know, um, and yeah, I just think he could light it up. I don't know. Something reminds me of I, I, I hate when people compare people to Mahomes. But I don't know. There's just something about it. Like, you know, he lit it up in, in a smaller division. You know, I know it's big difference between big 12 and fcs but um i mean it's still it's still there and you know like they're like oh it's just because of lack of competition i don't know there's just that one point they're just so good that it doesn't even matter who the hell they're playing and you, you saw that with mahomes and would mahomes be good if he didn't sit a year behind alex smith not even i don't even think he would be as close as good he is right now so um it'll be interesting but i something just tell me the 49ers are gonna go with lance um Fourth pick is really interesting to me, and uh, you know Atlanta's picking four, and um, I fully expect them to trade out of this pick unless they want either Fields or um, Kyle Pitts. But I just some it just has to be a quarterback, I think, just because you know there's a there's a top five there's a top five quarterbacks, and I don't even think Mac Jones is in that. I think it's a top four. Then then there's Mac Jones. That's just how I'm feeling, and. You know, you, quarterbacks always go early. Like, you never see tight ends go early. And I don't care how good Pitts is. You know, it's it's always quarterbacks, edge rushers, and tackles. If you ever want, like, advice, like, if I had to give you advice in making your mock draft, just just put the quarterbacks, tackles, and and um, 
quarterbacks, tackles, and edge rushers, if there's a need for them, you know, you, you take them, and that's just how it goes, and that's how it's always went, and you never see a team go top five for a tight end. I don't care how good Pitts is. If they need a quarterback, they're going to be drafting a quarterback and not a tight end. So, um, you know, that being said, I think Fields will be for, whether it be Atlanta picking for, I, there's so many teams that could trade up here, you know, that would make total sense to me. Like, I could see Denver trading up here. I could see Detroit trading up here. I could see, um, I could even see, you know, New England making the jump from wherever they're picking 16 off the top of my head to um, this pick and it being a quarterback. And um, I just think Fields will go for just because I think I think all this stuff, this negative stuff about Fields is just from teams that want him, you know, trying to lower his draft value. And people are always pointing it to race. I don't know. This this happened with Josh Allen, too, if you remember, um, 2017. They just like, or 2018, these 2017, 2018. They just like shitting on these prospects so they fall, and um, it happens all the time. And, you know, feel, uh, Fields, I really do like Fields. I like him better than Wilson, to be honest. And, you know, I could get into it and make a 20-minute episode on just, you know, um, Zach Wilson versus Justin Fields. You know I might end up doing that, but um, I don't know. So I just think Atlanta makes sense. I just think four makes sense for Fields. You know, whether it's Atlanta, I just, it's whether it's Atlanta or not, you know, um, it just depends on if how, how much teams cover, covet Fields, I guess. But, yeah. Fifth, the Cincinnati Cincinnati Bengals are picking. I'm so sick. I'm so sick. I'm so sick of seeing teams friggin' mock um, a receiver here at five. Just because, like, dude, like, you know, um, first of all, uh, their, their receivers are all right. And I know you don't pass on Jamar's chase with the receivers they have, but they have no line. Like, you know, Jonah Williams will be all right as a right tackle, but, like, it's just, there's no, then the, there's no, um, they just need to tackle in a bad way and you know if you really like want to know who they're picking you know just you just got to think about like joe burrow what's best for his development you know um and the receivers are fine like i said but you don't want joe to get his you know demolished like he did last year like when he tore his acl so it, it's this this pick if i'm if if i had a besides first overall trevor going first if i had to put a bet on any pick like that i'm a thousand percent sure it's going to be you know is is seawall at five and he might not even be at five to be honest like i could see a team trading up with atlanta to take him at four but um he's not getting past five at all like I, if cincinnati's picking first in the draft and he couldn't trade back they were taking seawall they wouldn't you know it doesn't it's just i'm just so sick of seeing uh people mock chase at five um Miami, this is this is a, Miami's picking six. This is an interesting pick to me. Um, I, I Chase does make sense here, and I do want to put Chase here, but there's just something like it's just it's I, I had to give him Kyle Pitts just because I think Kyle Pitts is the the best offensive weapon in the draft. Um, that's not like an indictment on on uh, Chase's game at all. It's just it's just more of um me respecting Pitts's uh, potential and everything. And see the thing about receivers is. Uh, you, you, Miami has a decent amount of receivers and everything, and I know they already have Mike Gusecki, but I just feel like at tight end, I just feel like I, it's just Pitts at six makes sense to me. Uh, it's just, I, I was mocking Chase here for the longest time, and you know, I hate, the one thing about this is, is that means I, I have Chase seven, which is pretty late for him, but I mean, it, but then like, I don't feel bad about it when I have, you know, four quarterbacks and a tackle ahead of them. It makes total sense. And then, you know, a, a person of Pitts is, um, ability skill set you know so this is nothing about chase it's just more of you know quarterbacks always getting overdrafted and you know um how big a tackle how big of a need a tackle is you know so that means at seven detroit's picking and you know like i like i kind of alluded to i'm giving them jamar chase here try to pause I just want to write the the picks down so I can just get to them. Um, where was I? Um, yeah, Detroit taking Jamar Chase for a while. I thought Detroit was going to go quarterback, and I, you know, I even had them trading up for Zach Wilson. Um, that was like with the Dolphins though, when the Dolphins were still picking a three. But you know, um, now like I, it's, I don't like Jared Goff, but I mean, I, I guess you give him a year and uh, see how he does. They have a good line and everything, but um. You know, losing losing Kenny Galladay this offseason is a big loss. And, you know, uh, at seven, dude, Jamar Chase is a steal. You know, Chase would go, I don't want to say, like, top five every year just because, you know, you don't really see receivers go that high. But Jamar Chase is, is definitely a special talent. And at seven, they should feel happy uh, taking him at seven and um, feel pretty confident with that pick. Pick eight, um, this is where, like, I kind of divide for most people. Like, uh, I don't know where most people have Carolina taking. I have them taking Rashawn Slater, and I, I say I'm different for most people because I've I've seen Slater like all over. I've seen him go as high as five. I've seen Sl Slater go five before, and I've seen him go as low as like twenty. And it's just 
the the people who have Slater going 20 don't know jack shit about the NFL draft. Um, tackles will always go high. You know, like it's just, it's like I said, it's just like the recipe. It's just it's quarterbacks, tackles, and um, edge rushers always get overdrafted. And you know, it's not overdrafted because it's how important they are to a team's um, you know, build. And you know, Carolina just I, I just saw I was just watching NFL you know live or whatever. They had Carolina taking Justin Fields. Like I don't why would you give up a second round pick for Sam Darnold? You know, obviously I'm biased about Darnold, but like it just wouldn't make sense for them to you know give up a second round pick if they're going to draft a quarterback. So um, at eight, it makes sense for them to go tackle. Just you know, I love their receiving core. I love their coaching staff. I love really everything about Detroit. I mean, um, sorry, Carolina except their line. So if you get a player as good as Slater, like. Dude, Slater, Slater, like, it's so, I'm just so weird about this class just because, like, I've seen Seawall being called, like, a generational left tackle. So, like, why is this not guy not going, you know, top two every time? Because you see, like, bad tackles get drafted top five. They're not bad, but, like, you know, in the in the grand scheme of things, they're not as, as talented as you think they would be to be going top five. But, um... Yeah, so like people, people were saying Seawall was like this generational tackle prospect, and then I've seen people saying Slater's actually better than him. So why is Slater going as low as twenty in some mocks? It's because people are stupid. So um, I think Slater's a lock to go top ten, and you know nothing's really a lock in this in any draft. But I mean, I don't really know what else Carolina would do, and you know getting Slater at eight's actually a good pick too. You know that's not over. You can't overdraft a, t a tackle, especially one as you know as i don't want to say as hyped as slater because you know obviously people get overhyped but like as talented i guess is is the right word nine so in this mock i didn't do any drafts just you know to keep it i mean any in this mock i didn't do any trades just to keep it simple and um so nine is denver's picking uh, I, I i liked mocking a corner to denver but i don't know nobody else does and i don't maybe i'm a kind of a sheep for you know hopping on the bandwagon but, um, you know, I gave Denver Mac Jones. I don't necessarily think that, like, I think Mac Jones will go in this spot just because it makes sense for Denver to trade back here and then take a, a corner because I still think they do. I th even after signing Fuller, I still think they need a corner. I don't know. Maybe I'm alone in that. But they need a quarterback as well. But I like Drew Locke. So I think um Mac Jones would go nine. You know, this, this makes a lot of, sp like, if I would mock a trade, I would, put new england picking nine and taking mac jones because this is a perfect spot for them to you know trade picks um but um you know there's not not a whole lot to say about mac jones uh i don't know i don't i like i said i, I kind of feel bad because i don't really think he'll be a Bronco, but i mocked him to the to denver here that's just because i think i'm he's going in this spot but it's about it Dallas is picking 10, you know, I, this is such a popular pick is, is certain here. He'd be the first, um, defensive player picked going 10, which is crazy. Cause I feel like usually you usually see these drafts like filled with defensive, like studs, but it's the first year you see a lot of offensive talent. So it's kind of interesting, but, um, I have a uh, certain going to 10 to Dallas and, um, it's a really good corner class and um, a lot of people think certain is the best and you know, I, I tend to agree, even though I think horn, I, I, I think horn's going to go way earlier than people think. Like I have a mock to, Mocked 16 at Arizona here, and I think he'll go um, earlier than that. Um, I think a team could trade up, you know, for J.C. Horn. But like I said, Sertain at 10. Um, Dallas needs a corner, you know, after losing Byron Jones. They still haven't. You know, I, I really like Trayvon Diggs a whole lot, but, like, not as your number one corner. That was a really good pick last year by them. So, you know, you, you reunite uh, the Alabama corners with Sertain and Trayvon Diggs, and I, I think it's a good start, you know, for their secondary. I'm not really sure how I feel about their back end, but um, – Certain's a good pick at ten. Uh, Giants are picking eleven. This one was this one wasn't really tough. I don't like. I was thinking Micah Parsons here, but you know something. I just think they'll go receiver. They don't need to, but I just feel like with the talent that is still available here at eleven, it w would make sense for the Giants to go receiver. I don't know how I actually feel about them taking receiver, but. You know, um, I, I gave him Waddle my last mock draft, but here I'm giving them Devontae Smith. Um, I heard something on the radio that the Giants really like Devontae Smith, like Gettleman really likes him, or no, it's Joe Judge really likes Devontae Smith. So that's kind of what which um, switched me away from Waddle. And I don't know if this will actually be how it shakes out because I, I just, I think the Giants already have enough, you know, burners because they have Dante Pettis and... um you know, John Ross, who are like pure burners and they don't really need another one. I just think Waddle brings more as a receiver, but you know, that's not, that's not speaking to, um, you know, a lack of Smith's ability or anything like that. Like I think Devontae Smith's a great receiver, but I just think Waddle would make more sense. But you know, I, I guess I did kind of want to switch it up. So I'll give him Devontae Smith here, but, um, 
Following them at uh, Philadelphia at 12, I'm giving them Jalen Waddle. And, uh, you know, Philly Philly needs either to take a corner or a receiver in the first round. You know, a lot of people, a lot of Philly fans, I, like, I really don't hate any NFL teams. I hate their fans. And, dude, Eagle fans piss me off. And it's really because, like, Harry Roseman's made such a good move, you know, bumping back from where he did from 6 to 12, if, if I remember right. And just because the amount of talent that's still going to be there. And I know at 12 you could get either Pitts or Chase, but, like, I don't know. I feel like adding that extra first round pick, if I remember right, you know, moving back six spots and still getting a player as good as like Jalen Waddle or Devontae Smith, who, who people were mocking to them at six, by the way, they were, I've seen Waddle and Smith mock there at six. So you bump back, you add a first round pick and you still get them, you know, six round, six picks later. It's, you know, it's perfect. Um, really good job by Howie Roseman. And, you know, people want his head on a platter and just, their, their fans piss me off sometimes. 13, the Chargers are picking, you know, this is, this is a really popular spot for Slater to go, but, you know, obviously I have him at eight, so, um, I'm giving them Darisaw. Christian Darisaw is a really good tackle, but, um, the, the thing with him is, like, it's just, he, like, I, this isn't really a knock on him, it's just, it's just more like, he's just kind of in a, a shitty class, there's just so many good tackles this year, and, you know, you could see him, like, going top 10, you know, in a normal year, but, you know, with, with the amount of skill they have here, Amount of, like at tackle, I just I just think Darisol will fall, and um you know I, I Darisol's another guy I see going so late. He's not falling out of the top twenty. I'm telling you that right now. But um you know thirteen is I think I think that'd be a good pick for the Chargers. Um Minnesota's picking fourteen. I I, I so so what happened with Minnesota is at first mock I kind of like I kind of made it out there pick and I gave him Jalen Phillips you know from Miami, and a lot of people started mocking that like right after I did. I'm not saying like I started a trend or anything like that. I'm just saying that's what happened. So then I started jumping on the bandwagon. I was like, yo, let's go. Like, you know, I kind of like, I kind of got this on the head. And so I would just consistently mock him there at 15 and or 14. And, you know, now that I think about it, I like it more than I did when I was actually mocking it, but I just feel like they need a, a guard more than they need a edge rusher. So I'm giving them Eliza Vera Tucker guard from USC. And, Vera Tucker's another guy who's going to go higher than people think just because people don't understand the value of a line. So uh, 14 is kind of high for him, but um, he's I, I, he'll go just because he's like the only like draftable guard in the first round. So he'll go he'll go really high. So I have no problem with him at 14. 15, like I said, I expect New England to uh, trade up from 15 just because they don't have I, like dude. I love Cam Newton, but um, I don't know. He's he, he seems kind of washed. So I don't think I don't think he'll be good next year to be honest. But I'm giving him Micah Parsons. You know Micah Parsons. One of the weirdest uh, people I've ever known. I, I don't know him personally or anything, but like, if you want to look into like the stuff he did, like the hazing stuff he did at um, Penn State, there's time in Happy Valley. You know, it's, it's really weird, and like, I don't want to get into it just because like it, it kind of makes me sick to my stomach just thinking about. But you know, um, obviously Bill Bill Belichick does not care about stuff like that. You know, um, uh, you've seen him pick up guys who have like beat people and stuff. He just doesn't care. Like, dude, you saw him pick up Antonio Brown after like the league, like he's like the league's garbage. So, um, yeah, that's obviously not a concern of his, um, whether that's like morally good or not, you know, that's for you to decide. But, you know, I think Parsons at 15 makes sense. Um, just cause I, I you saw how good their defense was a couple years ago. They, they do need a corner too now. I, I don't I don't know if they need a corner. Like I really like J C Jackson. Like I love J C Jackson. And obviously Stephon Gilmore is still good. So I feel like they could use somebody in the middle of the defense to kind of help them. And um, I think Parsons would be a good pick at fifteen. Sixteen, you know, I already got into it. Um uh Arizona's taking J C Horn. I don't think Horn will be here at sixteen. He's been this is a guy like who wasn't even getting first round hype at the beginning of the season. The season happened and he's kinda of sneaking in the back end. Like you saw him like twenty five probably usually and then and then now I've even seen him as high as I've, I've seen Dallas taking JC Horn, I think was the highest I've ever seen him. And, um, I don't think he'll go. T I said he would go top 10 at one point, but now I'm more of like, I think 16 is his, is his floor. Like that's, that's like the lowest he'll go is, is, um, 16. And, uh, you know, Arizona needs a cornerback, especially after losing, um, Patrick Peterson this offseason. I really, I really love, um, Arizona's defense, you know, just across the board. There's just so many, like, I don't know, like, like ballers. They got a good pat, good pass rushing. Um, I know they lost Reddick, I think, but um, I really, I really love Buda Baker and I love uh, Byron Murphy. And then you know, uh, J if they get J.C. Horn, dude, it'll it'll just be a, a really good defense. Seventeen picking Las Vegas, and I give I'm giving Jalen Phillips. Um, you know, like I said before, when I was putting Phillips at fourteen, I thought that was kind of early, but now I think seventeen is kind of late for him, just because he's you know um. <clears throat> 
Everybody thinks he's the best pass rusher in the draft. I, like, I'm, I'm going to keep it real. Like, I haven't watched enough film to actually have, you know, personal opinions on some of these players. Like, I'm really going off what other people say. And then, like, you know, general draft trends. You know, And like I said, edge rushers always go early. So, like, is Jalen Phillips, like, in a normal draft, would he go 17? I don't know. But um, everybody seems to think he's, like, by far, like, the most, like, skillful. Um, or I don't know, just the best pass rusher in this draft. So, like, 17 is, is kind of late for him. But, um you know, everybody needs pass rushing, and, you know, I'm, uh, Las Vegas, I, I think they're hoping that um, Vera Tucker falls here, and, then, you know, maybe they trade up for to make sure they get him, but, you know, that would be an ideal situation for them, especially after, you know, cutting their entire offensive line this offseason, so um, you want to address line in this draft at one point, at some point, you know, 17 would be a good spot with Vera Tucker there, but, you know, um, I have him going 14, like I said, so they get Jalen Phillips. 18's Miami again. Uh, another pass rusher, Quiddy Pay, Michigan. Another, another. A lot of people like him a whole lot, and um, like I said, I don't know a whole lot about these pass rushers, but um, you know, the, I like Miami's defense a whole lot. I just think they're like one pass rusher away from being like really elite, and um, you know, their secondary is you know great. Like I love their secondary, love their corners and everything, but um, just need some pass rush help, and you know, uh, Quiddy Pay would help it uh, a decent amount. Um, if I remember correctly, a lot of people like Pay, but um, they're just kind of he's more of like a project and um like I say, he's more of a project so i, I don't know i don't like I, I can't give you scouting evaluations on most of these guys because i've not had the time to watch film so i kind of feel stupid like even admitting that but whatever 19 washington i've given him a wusu karamoa you know um he's more of like a safety linebacker and you know like they don't need pass rush at all so this is like more of a just like a luxury pick i guess um that's that's not really true like when i say that like they don't need defense and, but I don't know what else they would go like um a lot I love I, they could go quarterback they could trade up you know but uh, it's just like at 20 at 19 it's a tough spot and you know do they I don't know like Mac Jones would be all right but um I don't know I don't I don't really know what they do at 19 but um Owusu Karamoa makes a whole a whole lot of sense just because how good their pass rush is you know just get a you just need um you know playmakers on the back end you know you don't they don't need to be solid every down just because that like I said um quarterbacks could be extremely uncomfortable just with how good their d-line is so i mean you just get players that make plays and the defense is going to be fine and you know if they get if they could get a guy like um Owusu karamo at 19 that's just a steal and um you know the, their defense quickly becomes like one of the i like honestly like even as it is right now i think it's one of the better defenses in the league but i mean with him you know and just like i just think their defense becomes that much better 20 this is this is an interesting pick to me just because um I used to love mocking Mac Jones here, but then, like, he's getting mocked at three, so I can't have him at 20. And I, just, I would just love Mac Jones to be a Chicago Bear. But, um, you know, they had to cut Fuller this offseason, so, you know, one Virginia Tech cornerback leaves, they replace him with another. And I, I'm giving him um, Caleb Farley. Farley was a guy, like, he was getting mocked at six when the, when, um, when the Eagles were still picking there, and then, you know, stuff came out about it. I think it's his back. So um, a lot of people are concerned about his whole... Uh, injury situation and you know rightfully so but dude farley like could end up being the best cornerback in the on them in this draft and you know that's like saying a lot with how how much people like jc horn and how much people like patrick certain but um you know farley at 20 could end up being a steal i really like i still like chicago's defense even though it's kind of a couple of years removed from being like you know that elite defense that it was you know with khalil mack and um and uh eddie jackson but um they have a lot of good I, I really like Jalen Johnson like that I, I just think they need one more corner like you know obviously after cutting um keep blanking on his name but um Fuller after cutting Fuller they definitely need another t uh corner so I think addressing that would be smart 21 in Indianapolis a lot of people like giving Indianapolis a receiver here I don't know how I feel about that um I don't know what the hell happened to Malik Hooker but um so I'm giving Trayvon Morig the safety from TCU um I don't know not much to say about this I just think Morig's going to be the only safety draft in the first round. Like, I, I don't think uh, Wusu Karamo is technically a safety. Like, everybody's calling him a linebacker, and he could end up playing safety. But um, Morig's, like, the only, like, pure safety anybody's mocking the first round. And I just feel like I had to put him somewhere. So I, I know that's kind of a stupid um, way to go about making a mock, but whatever. Um, like I said, I don't know what the hell happened to Malik Hooker, but he was on another depth chart when I checked. And I was like, all right, I'll give him a safety, I guess. Uh, I like the receivers though. Um, I think Ty is back, right? And then um, Michael Pittman, and they have another guy too. That's pretty. I think they have Paris Campbell. So like, I mean, yeah, they still need a receiver, but um, I don't know who you pick here. 
you know, um, it's just not that big of a need. And um, I don't know. If Morig's pretty good, I guess. I haven't watched a whole lot of Texas Christian. Tennessee's picking 22. Um, I'm giving I, I'm giving them a receiver just because I feel like they need to replace AJ Brown and um, not AJ Brown, sorry, um, Corey Davis. And uh, I I don't know. I saw this mocked once and I kind of fell in love with it just because I don't, I'm kind of like weird with this stuff. Like when I see like a school connection, you know, I do it. Like that's why I used to love mocking um Jamar Chase to the Bengals just because of that LSU connection with Joe Bar Joe Burrow. But um I'm giving the Tennessee Elijah I'm giving them Elijah Moore from Ole Miss and uh, I don't know I don't know. I guess I just made this because, you know, A.J. Brown went to Ole Miss, but they do need a receiver after losing um, Corey Davis. And uh, I think I think Elijah Moore is going to end up going way earlier, you know, than people are mocking. Just It's like people, like, hate – it's weird. They, like, they don't have a high opinion on the receivers after the top three, and I don't think that's kind of fair just because – I don't know I don't know where it's coming from, but um, that's how I feel. This could be – this probably will be Bateman, um, but I don't know. Something's telling me it's going to be Elijah Moore, and maybe this is that weird school bias that I kind of got into. Jets are picking 23. The Jets have two picks in this area. You know, they have 23 in the second pick in the second round. Dude, one of them has to be a corner, and one of them has to be interior to alignment. And um, I don't think the Jets would be crazy for trading up from 23 and trying to get Elijah Vera Tucker if he starts to slip a little bit, or trading up to try to get, you know, J.C. Horn or even Caleb Farley. But, um... I don't even think Newsom will be here, to be honest, at 23. I think he'll go earlier than I have a mock, but I'm giving him to the Jets at 23. This is his, I think this is his floor. He won't go any lower than 23, just because, um, you know, uh, he's, he's he kind of, like, fits every scheme, and um, the, the Jets need a cornerback. Like, I know uh, I'm not making this a Jets episode just because I could get into their cornerback needs for, like, 20 minutes, but, you know, um, if, if you need to know, like, what their needs are, you just got to look at their depth chart, and they have Blissane Austin, a sixth-round pick, and Bryce Hall starting right now. Bryce Hall, fifth-round pick. And, you know, Bryce Hall's a, a, a fine slot cornerback, but, you know, they have him starting outside right now, so you need a guy to play outside, and um, uh, Newsom would be a good pickup. Pittsburgh, I, I, I mocked them Tevin Jenkins once, and then I don't think I've stopped. They just need a line lineman badly. Um, It could be an interior linebacker, I guess. I don't know, inside linebacker, but uh, I don't know. I just kind of make... I just kind of made this pick Jenkins. Um, for his first name, Tevin Jenkins, uh, tackle from Oklahoma State. I made it once, and then I just kind of ran away with it. Uh, you know, they need they need a uh, lineman badly, and um, you know, this is they need an interior lineman too. They need a center too. I don't. These centers might go way earlier than anybody's predicting, like Creed Humphrey and um, Wyatt Davis. And there's another one, uh, Wisconsin Whitewater guy. I forget his name. I don't know. They could slip into the first round just because this this interior line class is is like, it's just um, it's just not a, like, I don't say it's not good, but nobody's getting hype besides Elijah Vera Tucker, like first round hype. So uh, these guys could very well sneak into the first round, and you know you see it happen every year. So um, dude, I'm i bet you I bet you that Wisconsin Whitewater dude ends up in the first round, but um, you know I don't know. I'm just giving him Jenkins. I'm just gonna be safe with this one. 25. I'm giving um Jacksonville Rashad Bateman receiver from Minnesota. I made this pick just because of what the Bengals did last year. You know, you saw them start the draft off by taking um, Joe Burrow. And then with their next, you know, the first pick in the second round, they took T. Higgins, a receiver. So um, I feel like that's a good, that's a good like way to go about things. You know, you, you draft your franchise quarterback and you pair him with a, I don't want to call, I wouldn't call Rashad Bateman a franchise receiver, but, you know, just um, first round receiver uh, to, you know, kind of grow with. So um, Bateman could end up higher than 25. He, I, Bateman is like a love hate people. Like a lot of people think Bateman will, you know, for sure be a top twenty five receiver. And there's other people don't even mock him in the first round. And um, I used to mock him to the Jets all the time, but you know now I don't know. So twenty five it makes sense. Twenty five makes sense for the Jaguars to take him. Um, twenty six Cleveland's picking. This I like giving. See if Quiddy Pay was here, I would give him to him. But like like I said, pass rushers just go way earlier than than they're ever mocked. So I just don't think he'll be here at twenty six. But um, I'm giving them far more tackle from Alabama. This interior D line class is one of the worst I've ever seen in my life. But that's not like that's not saying that's not to say Barmore is a bad prospect. It's just there's no depth behind him. So um, you know, usually you would say like, oh, that means like a, a he should Barmore should go way earlier. But I don't know. I just feel like every position is just way better than um in this class than D tackle. Like I think D tackle is far and away like the the worst position to be you know to have as your number one need and that's not saying Cleveland's number one needs a D tackle but 
Uh, they just cut um, Sheldon Richardson, who plays on the inside. So Barmore would be uh, a pretty good player to replace him on the inside. Baltimore giving Terrace Marshall, receiver from Louisiana State University. Um, I used to always think he went to Ohio State for some weird reason. Like, not like not that like I didn't know who he was. It's just I was always put Ohio State when I mocked him. So, um, you know, Baltimore now, now has two first round picks in this draft after uh, trading away um, Orlando Brown. That was pretty interesting and. You know, when I first saw it, I was like, dude, they are freaking crazy because I thought it was Ronnie Stanley they traded, but it was only Orlando Brown. who's still a fine tackle, but, you know, um, I thought they got good um, good value for him. But I was ready to go, like, balls to the wall, like, ape shit on them for trading Ronnie Stanley for what they got. But, you know, Orlando Brown is, a wor- is worth about that, I guess. But um, they need a receiver badly. You know, like, I like Hollywood, but um, not as your number one receiver. He'd be, like, good to, like, you know, like, as a piece of the puzzle. And, um... You know, just adding a player like Terrence Marshall would help uh, Lamar Jackson's development a whole lot. So that brings up pick 28, New Orleans. Um, they need an interior. In, I keep saying interior linebacker. What the fuck? You need inside linebacker bad. Um, I'm not sure what Zayvon Collins plays. Um, I always thought he was interior linebacker. Just watching like a couple Tulsa games. But, um, you know, people like him more as a as like a will or an outside linebacker, which is kind of what Demario Davis is. And, um, I don't know, it'll be interesting to see how they match up. I just think a lot of people like Collins a lot. Uh, another guy that this could be is, um, I don't want to pronounce his name wrong, but I will. Uh, Jamin Davis, I think, or I don't know. Uh, linebacker from Kentucky, dude. This 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 guy's getting a lot of hype right now, like out of nowhere. like um, And he, I know he's a pure interior linebacker, so... Um, like, I made a Giants mock, like, where I just did the Giants picks, and I took him in, like, the third round. So, you know, that's obviously a reach in the first round, but I don't know. I've seen him mocked really early, and um, he's, like, the only pure interior linebacker. Like, I don't, um, all these other guys play everywhere else where he's just, like, a tackle machine in the middle. So that that, that could be him here. Or, like, Nick Bolton from Missouri is, is another guy like that. But um, I think Jamie Davis will go before Nick Bolton, but um, uh, Collins is going to be a first-round pick. There's no doubt about that, I, I don't think. You know, um, not a lock or anything, but... You know, New Orleans, New Orleans needs the help on defense, especially, like, they're in salary cap hell right now. And they might have to trade um, Marshall and Lattimore just, you know, just even get under the draft, the, the salary cap. So, you know, um, they need the help, though, is my point. Green Bay's picking next, 29. I'm going to Rondell Moore receiver. Purdue, I don't know. I don't know what Green Bay's going to do. I do think they need a receiver, though. Like, And um, I love Devontae Adams. You know, I think he's um second-best receiver in the league after um, DeAndre Hopkins. That's just my personal opinion. But um, I really do like the receiving depth. Like, they got guys like uh, Valdez Scantling, um, St. Brown. And uh, there's a, there's one more guy I was thinking about the other day. I couldn't think of his name. But I liked him. And they're just all fine, like, you know, depth receivers. But, like, I just don't like them lined up as a number two. And Rondell Moore is a guy I would love lined up as a number two across from Devontae Adams. You know, um, you know, I, I, I believe Rondell Moore is a little undersized. He'd be in the slot. But, like, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Um, I just think they need a guy that to kind of take – to kind of shoulder the, you know – to kind of take the pressure off of Devontae Adams. Because right now, like, you, you you can throw guys at Devontae Adams and you're just, like, leaving, like, less for, like, Valdez Scantling. You know, he's a, a good receiver, but, you know, he's he's not as good as Rondell Moore. 30, uh, Buffalo's picking. Buffalo, they shouldn't even touch their offense. Their offense is fine. Maybe grab a receiver in the third round. But, um, you know, um, they do need they do need a little pass rush help. So I'm giving Jason Owe from Penn State. This is another guy, um kind of developmental guy that could end up as a end up being really a really good pick but um you know did, people aren't sure about his uh, floor and you know i usually had barmore going here just because i, I really like barmore with um ed oliver but you know i, I had him at cleveland so you know i could see cleveland end up going away and then you know barmore going here but um i have it like this here so i'm gonna leave it baltimore's picking 31 this is the pick that was kansas city's um uh I see Baltimore fans are like they're, they're like yelling. They need a receiver and a tackle. So um uh you know obviously to replace Orlando Brown now. So I'm giving him Cosme uh from Texas. Not really sure what to say about Cosme, but um uh I've seen him mocked pretty. I've, I, he goes in the first round often. I'd say fairly often. So like 31. I don't feel bad about giving him here. 32 Tampa base picking. Um uh 
Tampa needs a... They like giving him um, Collins here, but I don't think Collins will be here this late. So I'm giving him... You know what? I was like, frig it. Like, you know, what's we'll like a fun pick to give him? And I was like, Travis Etienne. It makes sense. You know, Kansas City, what did they do after winning the Super Bowl last year? You know, they took Clyde edwards alaire just like, you know, at 32, you know, just to be to just to be a piece of the friggin' electric offense. So I, I'm giving... I'm, I think Tampa Bay goes a similar route. Like, and, um, you know, they still have... They still have Burnett and Ronald Jones. So, like... I don't know if they would go ETN, but um, I just think it's just like, why not? It's, it's funny. It's just funny to mock, like, just imagine, like, this offense and with ETN. ETN, and, you know, I think Najee Harris is a better running back than ETN, but I just think ETN's a better scheme fit just because, like, you have Tom Brady, so you're going to be throwing a whole lot, and um, ETN's way better out of the backfield than Najee Harris. And, uh, you know, Najee Harris is going to go early in the second round, I would think. You know, even uh, even Jacksonville, Jacksonville could take him at the beginning, but um, Jacksonville. Uh, but... You know what? Uh, whatever. Etn thirty two is funny. You know why not? You know so that's about it. Um, I don't know. I'm pretty confident in all these picks. I feel bad because like I, I couldn't really give like those good like um in in depth scouting reports, but that's not what this is. This is like how I think. This is more of like you know general trends and like team needs and what position um people should go and like I've I've been reading I've read a crazy amount of mock drafts, so I, I think I think I think this will be pretty accurate. You know I say that and then I get what like the top I get two picks right the entire first round but you know that's about it um you know uh, i might do one more draft thing before the draft which i know is, is kind of crazy considering it's on thursday and it's made a 40 minute video about it but you know uh it's the best time of the year god bless